Today, I want to introduce the alluvial diagram in ggplot2. What is the alluvial diagrams? Alluvial diagrams are a type of flow diagram originally developed to represent changes in network structure over time. It is a great tool for exploring categorical data, broke data into flows that can easily be traced in a diagram. Let us see more details. Alluvial diagrams consist of multiple horizontally distributed columns representing factor variables. There are three factor variables, class, age, and sex, in this easy example. Vertical divisions, also called strata of this axis, representing these variables' values, and splines connecting vertical subdivisions within strata of adjacent axis, representing subsets or amounts of observations that take the corresponding values of the corresponding variables. The segments of alluvia between pairs of adjacent axes are flows. The alluvia intersect the strata at lows. How to create alluvial diagram? An alluvial diagram depends on both how the underlying data is structured and what the creator wants the plot to communicate. And alluvial plot has two types of data, alluvial wide format and low long format. Wide format consists of one row per alluvium to show the frequency equal to observational units, which may be used to control the height of the strata. Look at the graph. We can know that the number of crew was highest at Titanic, and there were more males, and most of them were adults. Long format contains one row per load and can be understood as the result of gathering or pivoting. The columns of a data set in the alluvial format into a key value pair of columns, encoding the axis as the key and the strata as the value. As for our code, we need the packages of ggplot2 and ggalluvial. The following are some common and basic functions to create the plots, but I want to illustrate them using examples. Let's look at first example. The data is about graduate school at Brooklyn for the six largest departments in 1973, classified by admission and sex. The original format is a three-dimensional array resulting from cross-tabulating 4,526 observations on three variables. The variables and their levels are as follows. Then we can use the function as data frame to transform the original format into frequency table and a new column will show up like this. This column shows number of units. Then we create a ggplot firstly and set y-axis is frequency, and there are two x-axis, gender and department. After that, we use gm alluvium to set some characteristic of the alluvias, and use gm strata to set the characteristics of the stratas. The black parts change the width, fill, and border color. About this example, if we exchange the location of department and admit, we can get another plot. In the new plot, the six colors represent six departments, and the new column is about admitted or rejected. Let's look at the second example using the data of Titanic. We set three axes and put layers one by one. We can get the plot like this. If we don't want the annotation, add guess and set the fail equal to false. If we want to turn the diagram, we can use the crowd flip. The geom test has the same function as the geom label. Geom test adds test directly to the plot. Geom label draws a rectangle behind the test, making it easier to read. The infer label parameter instructs a state stratum to take the values of the access variables as labels. The horizontal access must be manually corrected to reflect the impact characteristic variable identifying the access. And I use the sales data side from our class to create a plot. This plot shows that the male consumed more wind than female in 2010, and we can easily see the in the central of country, the women don't like drink white wing, and other information we can know easily through the diagram. Let us talk about the low long format. 
I think this format is more complex. The format allows us to assign aesthetics that change from access to access along the same alluvium, which is useful for repeated measure state sets. This requires generating a separate graphical object for each flow. As implemented in GM flow, the plot uses a changes to students' academic curricular over the course of several semesters. And uh, as we can see with the semester changes, more and more students choose the painting. We always use the long format in a time series data, where we want to track a categorical value over time. And now I want to give a conclusion. Alluvial diagrams were originally developed to visualize structure change in large complex networks. They can be used to visualize any type of change in group conversation between states or over time and include statistic information to reflect significant change. Alluvial diagrams highlight important structure changes that can be further emphasized by color and make identification of major transitions easy. There are two formats of alluvial diagrams, alluvial wide format and low long format. Long format mostly used in time series data. If we just deal with categorical data, I think the wide format is easier. Thanks for listening about alluvial diagrams using ggplot2. I also give the links about this knowledge. If you are interested, you can search more and create one plot by yourself.